How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Saturday Night Movies Podcast, the podcast where friends come together to talk about the movie of the week. This week's movie was picked by none other than... What's your name for me this week? I don't know. You've called me the Mrs. Little Lisa, (laughs) the woman over here. I don't know. (laughs) Okay, so um, apparently I don't know. (laughs) By the coffer. (laughs) <laughs> and there it is. Yeah. <laughs> spreading things. Yeah, sure. No, I do not have COVID. So. Diseases. Bacteria. Well, hey, virus. we're in summer 2021. We don't even know if COVID still exists. Well, what are you talking filming, about? Well, yeah, in the past. <laughs> okay, so um, according to the watermark, I chose a movie from the early 2000s called Tortilla Sol. How do you do so? Is it, what is it? So, sopa? Sopa. Sopa. So, uh, would it be? Sopa de tortilla. Sopa de tortilla. Yeah, it's a movie about Mexicans, which Katie has called me before, even though I am Puerto Rican. But it's all the same thing. thing. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Don't come at me, tits. <laughs> um, so, I picked this. I watched it the first time, maybe about like six years ago i discovered it on netflix something like that and i was like definitely up my alley um and i've seen it a couple times um but i didn't remember like a lot of in-betweens but um the description and because i've seen it this is one of those few times that i actually watched the trailer (gasps) yes i got him to watch the trailer so but i gave it like a guess as a seven because i have seen it a couple times i enjoy it um but it's been maybe three years since i've seen it and i didn't remember a lot except like little like pieces Mm -hmm. um and after the trailer i didn't write it down but the trailer was like a five like it's my genre but it's not an award-winning trailer i mean before the trailer i was willing to give this a five and then after watching that trailer, I was like, no, this is a four. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad trailer. It, it was, was definitely a bad yes. trailer. <laughs> it had independent early 2000s, like, in a household <laughs> where people cook a lot of food. And that food looked incredibly disgusting. Oh. She I'm just sorry. triggered a lot that's, of people. That's okay. She <laughs> likes Panda Express. I mean... It looked gross. <laughs> it gross. did. And what did you say throughout the thing? Well, we'll get into no, it. No, we'll get into that. So yeah. what about you, Katie? After reading the description, I gave it a four. After watching the trailer, I actually gave it a five. Huh? Even okay. though it was a crappy trailer, <laughs> it did sound interesting. Okay. And then I watched it. <laughs> and then? Well, count us down. In three, two... One, show your numbers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so me and Elmer both gave it a five. <laughs> and I stayed at my seven. So looking at the internet, what's interesting is last week um, with the Poughkeepsie tapes, we're kind of in the same territory for um, rating. So Internet Movie Database gave it a 6.7 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes, a 74%. And Google an 83%. So it's pretty much on par with last week's, like, how the people felt. Um, So, yeah. Do you want to go into pros? Yes. Okay. Well, my pro. (laughs) One, um, I'll pull a Katie. It's my genre. (laughs) Um, It's a go-to for me. What is this genre anyway? Family. (laughs) <laughs> that's the genre it's it's a it's family it's a drama um it's it's like people like i really do enjoy family dramas a lot but not ones where it's just like oh woe is me or like victorian type like the stuff. beethoven movies oh god those I are ha- family i'm going to shock <laughs> the world oh, the, i hate beethoven okay what, what what about problem child that's about families <gasps> that, that's I okay problem, problem child. child but that's more comedy this isn't like a full-on comedy this is this is a, like drama like medea no, Ooh, I love the uh, movies. <laughs> but um, I also like movies that it, like revolve around food. Oh. I like when families cook meals within their culture, and the family, even how separated they are, they always come together 
on equal ground. And I like seeing different cultures of food. There was a movie we did within one of our first ep- a few episodes was um, the like hundred year ago. It was a hundred foot um, journey, but that we saw cooking with French food and cooking with um, Indian, food. Indian food, but it wasn't one where it's like, we all come to a table. Um, so you, you just know, like food movies. No, well, yeah, I, well, kind of, but I do need a good story. Katie's go. like, okay, okay, what horror movie yes, includes food? food. Be like, I do have to say. <laughs> Thinner. <includes> yeah. Pie. <laughs> I do have to say, though, I, one genre that I do actually enjoy uh-huh. for horror, I love cannibal movies. Cannibal movies. I enjoy cannibalism I should make as a concept. Watch cannibal Holocaust or Green Inferno by Eli Roth. Uh, That's fine. There she That's goes. fine. I, I actually do enjoy <laughs> cannibalism movies. A door. That's Katie okay. is willing to go through. <laughs> well, it'll I'm be trying, the first I'm, time Lisa's all like a ten out of ten. Fabulous. fabulous. It's fun. Um, but I like the idea of when um siblings, there's like difference of like character tropes in each sibling. Um there's like we we live different lives, we fight, but then we still kind of come together. And break plates. Yeah, which is what because I was very Greek and not Mexican, but you know, Pro- cultural <laughs> appropriation. <laughs> right. But like that's that, and then plus I love, love, love Hector Elizondo. Um, I've watched many of his movies. I enjoy him. Which one and was that? He was a dad. a dad. See, okay, he's the only one I recognize out of the entire cast, and I was like, oh, it's the guy from Princess Diaries. <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever watched um pretty woman one of his uh he was the matri- uh, not matri- he was the the manager of the what hotel what was the movie where he was like an angel and there was like a girl with a house or it something it was in a lifetime movie yeah. no a hallmark hallmark or lifetime wait what I can't remember. <laughs> she it's was watching Christmas it i was like movie. they're watching it yeah you but you sat through it was, i didn't make you like you a, were in the room it's a weird movie it was cute though well it's hallmark I mean, I, I a friend of mine put up a clip um, last Christmas and said uh, um, they they took a video of like the little like you had me at hello, but instead the line was like shut up, you had me at sewing kit, and I was like really that's where we are at is sewing kit now <laughs> like with these Hallmark love movies no no we're done we're done tune out I'm done. <laughs> But that's basically it. And I think for people that like these movies, mm-hmm. it's an easy watch. I mean, this movie, I I did like the focus on the family and like that closeness that they had. Because like growing up, my family wasn't really close like that. Like um, in the early years, yeah, we would sit down and have dinner. But I think once we reached like, once I was like 12 or so, it's like everybody ate on their own in their own room. And I didn't really get to experience that until later in life when I went to Puerto Rico and I saw that every Sunday the whole family would get together and it'd be like kind of like that, like just a buffet of food. Granted, they didn't cook it, they, they, they bought it, pretty. but it was still like, you know, we're all together, we're all sitting down, we're all eating. So I, I like that. I like the music. Um, I liked how even though they had all these different additions to the family coming from different places, it didn't tear the family apart. It actually, you know, made it grow and, and get tighter. And so, I yeah. just liked when like each of the daughters is like, I have some news and I have, like, I have an announcement. <laughs> like grabs his chest, like I'm done. <laughs> um, I do have to say that I'm kind of like Elmer in the sense where like, Growing up, it was everyone just either made their own food yeah, and ate by themselves. There was really no family dinner that I really remember. Same too. Unless I was like super, super young and just locked it out. Um, but I always remember like eating in my room watching Nick at night. <laughs> or like, Nick. Um, part of that family. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, my mom tried to do that with oh. me, her, or, well, me, her, and my grandma. Um, but it, it, it was, she tried. We used to have big meals when we lived in California before we met or moved to Nevada. But then that kind of, you know, went away unless it was either Thanksgiving or Christmas when some of my aunt's cousins would come over, like would drive over. Um, 
but yeah, it was only like Christmas. It was yeah. no only Thanksgiving where like I'd see all the cousins. Yeah, and it's so it's so foreign. I mean, granted, there are families where it's like even when you get together, it's like that's just a nightmare because people are just fighting against each other. But you know, sometimes where like you don't have that, and then all of a sudden you experience that. At first, you kind of at least in my case it's like oh this is weird i kind of want to shy away from it but the more that you spend time in it it's yeah. like oh this is really nice well we have that um every year unfortunately last year uh lockdown <laughs> happened um but we have had almost it's been like if we would have had it 2020 i think would have been our ninth year doing our ping pong tournament ping -pong. Um, and Bing bong, in and and no, we do not shoot the pongs from the the cooch. That's um, only on girls' night. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we we go to your cousin's house in Queens, and not only is it just family, it's also um, friends. Mm -hmm. That's family to them, and and it started so small. And it then, was like, literally over the years, four of us. It, it, it grew, and like you know, yeah. people bring their families, and we've all we have trophies. become friends. There's. Food, yeah, there's trophies. There's I'm known music. to bring the crazy mom desserts. I'm the only mom that's not a mom, and I'm the one that brings like the big Pinterest type desserts, uh -huh. and they all get a kick out of it. We and have, we, we, we get uh, me and the other women, we get plastered, and we have mo <laughs> we have moments of like uh, saluting each country with their national yes, anthem. Yes, because we have Puerto Ricans, Jamaicans, um, uh, Colombian, Colombians, Colombians. People from Peru. Yep, Peru. It's wow. it's like, like the only thing that's missing, and I keep telling your fireworks. cousin, is fireworks. <laughs> We're only missing fireworks. But we didn't have it, unfortunately, this year. Um, so, you know, well, last year. Oh, you're giving up secrets. <laughs> the show is just going to fall apart. It's really November, people. It's like three years ago when we filmed this when COVID first started. In '84, yeah. Um, but I do have to say, because you know, like at one point when I was younger, you know, my family is a pretty big family. We're very close, and then I didn't have that. And then when I moved here, whenever I would get a, around his mom's side of the family, it's big, it's fun, we're loud, and we have a good time. And mm -hmm. it's like that's where you see it like yes most of the food except a couple dishes are bought and we just have a good time yeah you know yeah. and and that's kind of the feeling that came through with this movie it was like i could i could see that feeling and and you know even even when you got issues with people in your family and you still sit down and as long as there's love and not bitterness yeah. Yeah. I think it's, oh, there was so much bitterness in that family. Oh, yes. Well, yeah, I'm talking about in real life. Yeah. Oh. Not this. I mean, it's a written movie, you know. So, yeah, those those were my What about you, Katie? Pros. What about your pros? My pros is I really like the dad character. Um, and I my favorite sister was the bitter shrew, the teacher girl with the bangs and how she's like I hate everything. And then she ended up getting with like the baseball coach. All Rodriguez. But the thing that bothered me the most with that is the fact that like those fucking crotch goblins wrote her fake notes thinking mm. he actually liked her. And yeah, it turned out lucky that like he did like her. Yeah. But when she kissed him and then he's like, what notes? I felt the embarrassment for her. I was just like, those motherfuckers. I was hoping she was going to run back in the school and start whooping some ass. <laughs> I don't think she had it just in her. Just taking plates and throwing yeah. it at them. <laughs> I like how he was the one that was yelling at them. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And I liked that it turned out well, and they ended up getting married. And then when she's like, oh, yeah, surprise, we're married. And I was like, Ooh, she knocked up. Did they like hook up that first night? And like, oopsie, there's. A I baby. don't think. I don't think it was a baby. I just think it's like. Yeah, because they did hook up, and you know, she was she was religious, Christian. and so yeah. she was like, you know what, we're gonna just. Or maybe they did hook married. up, and they were like, okay, let's just get this stupid wedding out of the way, so we can get to the dick. Maybe. <laughs> well, no, because no, because they did allude to the fact that. They, 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 you know, there was this incident. Yeah, yeah. I think that they, it was that. Like, you know, she slept with him, and it was yeah. like, you know what? Let's just go and, and get married. I think so. 
which uh, that does kind of happen. I, you know. Did you notice that Paul Rodriguez in the scene when he came into the house, he was dressed like Andy Dufresne? <laughs> His exact outfit was Andy who's, Dufresne. Who's Andy Dufresne? From uh, Shawshank. That exact outfit that he wore in prison. Paul Rodriguez was wearing it in the scene when, when she finally brought him into the house. Like the blue shirt and the blue jeans. Oh. You'd have to go back and see it. Uh, yeah, I just remember she went out on the porch. She's like, where are you? And I'm like, he fucking ditched her ass. <laughs> he got the Hello. guns and left. Oh, man, I didn't realize that was kind of like a, <laughs> I guess you could compare it to Shawshank, but also the fact that uh, Rita Hayworth, she was like the, Rita Hayworth. the woman trying to, Fuzzy britches. trying to get with the, uh, the with dad. the dad. And she that was, was the, Rita Hayworth? She was like, on the poster, yeah. Do you remember like in um, the first Legally Blonde, the mom with the, the girl with the curly hair? And then when she was like at the spa and she's like, you found me. She's like, I knew, you know, she was a little taut, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know? Vaguely remember. Yeah. But which they both came out around the same years. Um, I don't know. What other pros you got? Not a lot. <laughs> um, I literally was hoping that you would give it at least a five. Because I know this isn't your job. I did. I did. No, that, that, that's what I said. Oh. <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> no, I was saying that, like my hope, because honestly, I told him, I go, Katie's going to just hate this movie. Um, you know, because this is one, this isn't your genre, two, it is yeah. when we get into the cons slow. But I'm I'm happy that you at least gave it a five. I do like like family get together movies. Like for example, God, what the fuck is that movie? Like my Love big fat Greek wedding. Mm -hmm. Love that movie. I really like that in the sense of family. Um this one, oh, was just I was going to say, Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins. Yeah. Oh, my God. I <laughs> love those movies. Or I've movies never seen like it. That. I just threw it out there. You've never seen it? No. That's the one with Martin Lawrence, right? Like yeah. Out of jail, and it's like a family get-together or something. And then it's like a – oh, my God. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's like – wow. pick it. <laughs> if, it, if I could find that or maybe even uh, – Tyler Perry, like Tyler Perry's Medea's Family Reunion. Yeah. You know what? That one I did not like. I did not like Family Reunion. Not as much as I liked um, the Diary of an Angry Black Woman. But yeah, I don't know. But the late, the, like the later few ones that she did, like where he did, that Tyler Perry did, terrible. Like the one was like witness protection. Uh, yeah. And then like the Halloween one, I didn't even bother watching. I'm like, screw that. Okay, I will admit I've seen both of them. Of course, that's um, the jam. Because I'm like obsessed with Tyler Perry. Not only is he attractive, I love his. He Medea. is a very, he's a very hot man, but. Um. Medea, one or the boo, like, Medea boo or whatever it's called. The first one was good. The second one was. They like, made two. Yep, oh. they did. The second one is just not. I don't think it's worth watching, but. <laughs> But, but anyway, that is in it, so yes, her so. parts were good at least. <laughs> um, so back to the pros of this movie. I liked how what you were saying before with like the family stereotypes, because the youngest sister was obviously the free spirited girl Ignored. that just what? Ignored. Like that's that also a trope. That, but she was the more, to me, she came off more like the wild free spirit that was just like out and about doing her own thing. Then you had the bitter girl with the stupid bangs and she was like anti-everything and she's a good little Christian girl until she meets the baseball oh, player. <laughs> and then she's like, I want that dick. <laughs> it's like, my, my loins, my loins. It's like when he did, when he hiked up his, his uh, pants and he was like, you're there, like put your butt out. Mm -mm -mm. And then get that got her loins yeah. on fire. And then you have the middle child who is the educated one because apparently only one child can go to college in this family. 
or have an education and amount to anything besides being oh, a teacher. No, because she can have been a teacher without getting yeah. an education. Okay, true. But and then, and then the other younger one <laughs> was going to, to college. She too. was supposed to go to college. And she said she didn't want to. She wanted to discover herself first and then go. And then that was out of the couple times I've seen this. I was like, holy shit. She's 17 years old or maybe 18. Like, I just wonder if this is in the summertime. But no, because the school was in session. So I'm like, maybe does she's that taking mean, a year off. But the, does that mean that she's now bumping boot like with that one kid from um, Brazil? Like, is he, where are my is, is he like, <laughs> is he like older than her? Like, is there something with statutory rape? Like what's going think, on? I think they were the same or maybe he was a year older. But I'm just saying, I never I realized. think he has to be at least 18, but he might have been even older because what 18 year old is going to have his own studio apartment in California? Yeah, even if it's like you know, from Brazil, in, in, That's in the body, yeah, you know, it's like forty different languages, and he <laughs> lives in a pigsty, and then she cleaned his room up, like the good mad. little mother she he is, and then his he, papers. <laughs> see what he was talking about his papers. I was like, oh shit, is he trying to like? get his like residency papers like for his I know, and that's another thing like i told him i said you know like thank you tlc 90 day fiance my the way that i look at visas now completely different i i i sat there and i go wait a minute how if he's not a student is he here on a work visa and usually work visas are one really hard to get even back like in 2001 months. and two Usually, yeah, it's usually like teachers or medical. Like, there's a lot, or like he's already like in a corporate business. What, like, what did? How did he get here? It's not good. But that's the thing. Like, he had to have. But then, all of a sudden, miraculously, what happens? He gets he gets to go to the same college. I don't know. And don't he has know. that fancy little car. Like, who is it's this guy? Coincidence. And his parents are probably singer? the wealthy person in Brazil and not part of the poor people. Oh was, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! She when she's um when she's first meets him, she starts talking to him like they're talking about the music he's listening yeah. to, and then she says that his father is a producer. Hmm. She so she's like she's richness. like talking about someone famous, that's and then right. she was like so and so, and that's your father, and then she kept that's walking. Right. Maybe that's what it is, but they didn't they didn't go into it as much. I like when the dad. I guess I'm back in the pros. I like when the dad. Yell, yelled at him when she's like, I have an announcement. I'm moving back in with Andy. You lied and, to me. <laughs> you lie, you sit here and eat my food. How dare you? He's like, I had no idea. <laughs> One of the major cons I had besides this being like a two hour movie and I literally stopped it thinking, okay, there's going to be 20 minutes left. Shit you not. It was like, <laughs> I was at the 52 minute mark and I had like 54 minutes left and I was like, God damn it. <laughs> I was like, this movie won't end. It felt like uncut gems territory of this will this will never end. Mm -hmm. But what really grossed me out was the end of the movie where, you know, the older lady who was like dancing with him and she was like, oh yeah, mi amor. And like all this, what did he call it? Like Spanglish. You either speak one or the other, not the same at the same time. When she was all like, yes, tell us, mi amor, what do you have to say? And she's like expecting like he's going to propose marriage. And then he proposes to her daughter. Mm -hmm. Ew. Like <laughs> literally this dude looks like he could possibly be her dad. Yeah. And it's really gross to think that the mother wanted to be with this dude and instead he wants his her daughter i don't know that that just like creeped me out and it <laughs> ew ew because yeah, family reunions mm -hmm. i'm just picturing like the mother you know damn well she rubbed a few out well, did you of him. Did <laughs> and you now it's oh, her son-in-law she rubbed, she rubbed her little chili her little chili bean <laughs> a little jalapeno <laughs> seed and now he's gonna be her son-in-law and she's oh dear and it felt like he was throwing away his daughters for this new daughter and i was like that's not cool because he kept pushing the girl he's like go to spain go to barcelona go do this go do that and all she wanted to do was cook with him and he's like uh 
you need to go make something of yourself. And I'm like, she can cook. Yeah, but you got to understand one, because I think he, I think he might have immigrated over. Um, yeah, he, because, yeah, I think he might have immigrated and they were first generation American. Um, there's that idea of, and he was so old world where it's like, it's you either speak English or you speak Spanish, one of the two, you know, and he didn't want to have his daughter live the life he did. He wanted better. That's why he was always about education. That's why he wanted her to have the best life. And then she connected more with the guy that died and um, that she wanted to cook and, and all of these different things. And then remember, even she said to the, the boyfriend about her food that my dad calls it mutt food because she does like all the fusions and everything. He's just a purist. That's just who he is. And there is something about where when you have that American dream, right? So I think it wasn't that he was throwing his daughters away because he clearly wanted them all to live in his house as long as he could. He was upset that everybody was like moving out. And then he sold the house. Like yeah, all of them. I don't like, understand why he sold it. I think it, it depends when he made that decision. Mm -hmm. And was it after the fact that he started seeing that everybody was moving on? Mm -hmm. Because um, the memories needed to go to start well, something new. The, but the, the oldest the thing, daughter was memories. married. The oldest daughter was married. She was going to be moving out. The middle child, she was going to be going to Spain. Or in the beginning, she was saying that she had her own apartment. She was moving out. And then the youngest daughter, at first, she was going to go to college. But even he accepted that after the fact big. that he went and she moved in with the other guy. So he knew that he had the house all to himself. So I figure after all that happened, it's like, why am I living in this big house? Yeah, but I think he's been wanting to marry the the other woman. Um, <laughs> Since when? Like, the daughter. <laughs> no, I think because we don't know how many months this, this whole like from the beginning of the movie to the end. Um, and remember like, this 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 lady is a family friend right and the daughter like her daughter knows like his daughters and you know like all like there there is something about that like everybody knows and i don't think i think it would have been creepier if this daughter right or this woman that he was he wants to marry is like maybe 20. she looked like she was in her 30s Right, so and there he was, was like in his what sixties. Like, yeah. see, that's what's disgusting. It's like all the pairs we see on Ninety Day Fiance, where like Nick, like Nikki and the old dude that was all like, "Don't touch my car window," like how he was literally like sixty nine and she was like nineteen, younger yeah, than his youngest that's, daughter. That's different. The 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 this lady is as old as his oldest daughter. Yes, is it creepy? Yes, but it could have been. I argue it could have been creepier, but the thing is, I think their relationship actually started when, like, they had that little nice meeting. The daughter, yeah, and then she, and then they then the daughter stayed home because I guess she wasn't feeling or something, and then she said, "Oh, but don't tell her that I know because it's going to ruin her little secret," you know. And she I was eating her food. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't like her meatloaf. I wonder if he would like take it and then add his own little spices to Probably. it, or if he just ate it as it was. I mean, I but one thing I did notice at the end, her mom was not present at the family. So I'm wondering because they, they were already strained. Like she didn't like her mom. Her mom was like a controlling mother. Oh, I bet the the mother just couldn't look at her daughter ever again because she was she rubbing it out. To yeah, to what's his face, and now she's like basically like you harlot, you stole your future daddy. Like how could you do? That? <laughs> uh, but another <laughs> thing, <laughs> another. I, I get. I don't know if this is a pro or a con, but the guy who died, like they were all in the kitchen, and a glass just breaks, and he's just standing, and he's just sitting there, like. Like, I'm, I'm like, did this dude just pass out or die? And then they fill his neck, and apparently he died. There would have been some, like, slow slouching and then falling off the chair. That's in my notes, in my con. <laughs> Don't you slump over when you die? Because yeah, when, he, you, when you sit down, you're the one keeping your body up. 
So as soon as there's nothing holding that body up, it's gonna just drop slowly. Like I'm like, you know, I'm like an incline <laughs> that you know, his body. But he looked like he was. Like he wasn't. That. He was literally sitting, sitting straight, straight up, up because mm -hmm. what was behind him was just straight. It wasn't like a couch or something that mm -hmm. he was into. And even if he was on a couch, he would have probably went sideways. <laughs> He and like there was slumps like a newborn baby. He's like, because mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, like he was holding the glass, so he yeah. let go of the glass, so he would have lost all like muscle function. Muscle. So what exactly did he die of? I didn't understand. I think he probably just had heart problems. And he probably just, it was too early for him to have gone back, but he just wanted to just be there in company. And I have to say, like, if you're going to, like, clearly he had passion for food. And if you're going to die, then what die better a point? giant funnel but, of food. <laughs> and just sit there. But um, no, like, but like to die in a kitchen that you loved, you know, like. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, I'm I'm all about having funerals that are like you know like creative caskets like if you're if you work in a kitchen you're a chef your casket kind of looks like maybe like a tray with aluminum foil on it or something <laughs> or like they put you in a big pot i was gonna say do you want the casket to look like a patele but it would because he was cuban i mean it would be weird if they have to like curve your body to fit in a pot <laughs> or what if he, or what if they dressed him like a turkey and there was like vegetables and stuff and garnish around his yeah. body no that would be more like last week's movie at the poughkeepsie tapes when she was <laughs> all tied but um, imagine though if we lived in a world like that like if a barber they, they put his casket and it goes straight like Vertically, straight down into one of those blue, blue and white, like the signs that spin. Oh, I thought like you meant like the stripes. blue. I thought you meant like the, the, and the it's blue, like, the blue the wall. Cast gets <laughs> painted blue and white, and that's the thing that turns. Just something like, I don't know. <laughs> like it, 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 shows, it shows your profession, you know? And a teacher, when she dies, she can, her whole casket can be painted in that like chalk paint. So yeah, that's the right. Her. There you go. Two plus two is five. <laughs> Have you learned nothing? <laughs> oh, God. <Anyway>. Um, <clears throat> that brings me to back to the disgusting food. And the reason why I say disgusting food is can we talk about the whole fucking pig that was just like, <sighs> like fried and like. It's probably put on a. My, I've seen that. Yeah. I was How in I was can in you eat something that is looking at you? I was Just in don't Puerto look at the head. I was in Puerto Rico when they had a whole pig. Yeah. Like, like my uncle, he bought a whole pig and he was the one that had to like cut it open and, and like chop it up and then he took it to a place and then they would cook it. Yeah, and my my family, I wasn't That's... present for this, but when my mom was growing up, um she her in laws, her old her second oldest sister was married to um a, a, he she married into a mexican family and it's within the same kind of area as where this movie would have taken place and the garcias had on their front lawn front or back back lawn um at grandma garcia's uh they had a spit and they would roast pig yeah. and we even had um is i got it, pictures i gotta look no, no, no but no but like at, at ivan's house doesn't he because one of i think it was like a father's day gift he got that what is it called like la cochina or something something like that yeah it's like a special box where you can put i think it's called la china yeah so it's, it's a china box and you cook a cook you can a pig cook in a it. pig in it and oh yeah <laughs> like that's the fastest way to make me a vegetarian again. Like, I just can't. <laughs> Same with the fish. It's like one blinking eye, like, hey, guys, I think you missed a spot. I need some more <laughs> rubbing over here. So if you saw a whole pig, like if you saw a whole pig that was completely cooked, and you're sitting there, you see the whole pig, and someone, like, cuts off a piece of it and puts it on your plate, and it's like, like a nice, fresh piece of meat, you wouldn't be able to eat it? No, I would be like, I'm sorry. I know it's gonna look disrespectful as fuck, but I can't. Like, I'll no. have the rice. I'll, I'll go to my room. I would literally <laughs> not eat anything because all I would be staring at is that pig's head. Like, <laughs> I mean, I had the same feeling when like they sacrificed the poor sheep for Arian. That was bad. That was like, bad. So last year, 
on uh, 90 Day Fiance the other way, in Ethiopia, it is traditional uh -huh. for when a mother comes home with a baby, they bring out a live goat. No, and they, sheep. I thought and it was a goat. Sheep? Oh, it was a sheep? Okay, yeah. they put a sheep down. Do they kill it? Right oh. in front of yeah. her. And the blood comes down. It's supposed to be good luck and stuff. But the, the, the issue is the Ethiopian guy's name is Binyam. Mm -hmm. And his baby mama is Ari. And she's like all over the place. She's American. Um, <laughs> she's American. <laughs> very like entitled. Um, but he did not warn her about this. And now, one, she's already extra to begin with. That and all Two, the hormones after the birth. pregnancy, she's um, she had she had a, a, an emergency C-section. A lot was going on with her, so and she was not expecting. And she walked out, and then they literally brought the goat in, forced the goat down, slit the throat, and then he didn't understand why she couldn't. Get she was that, like and literally then, crying, like, oh my God. And then she's like, I'm they're doing it for you. It's it's it means good luck. And she's like, now I feel even worse. You killed this poor sheep for nothing. <laughs> like yeah. that's that that is my reaction. Like I've always thought about like, you know, um when people get ducks, sometimes the head and neck is still attached, and the neck, mm -hmm. like like I just it's like this thriller. <sighs> Like it, it just grosses me out yeah. because it reminds me like this thing, like this pig on the table that's roasted. Yeah, it might taste good. Used to be a living, breathing animal. Like you could have named it Daisy. Uh -huh. You ate Daisy. <laughs> like, no, oh God, no. But when you I know go to the store, <laughs> when you go to the store and Parts of Daisy is wrapped up in plastic. <laughs> well, I still don't know. So. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying in general, yeah. all of it. But you know? that, that's the thing. Like, it's not, like yeah. it's so easy for me because I used to be a vegetarian for five years and then I stopped. But now I don't eat a lot of meat at all. But it's easier to have a hamburger because there's so much other stuff combined that you don't even think about it versus here is a full entire fish. Like, huh. no, still head. When, you, when you're not used to it, I'll give you that. It's 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 a bit of a shock, for sure. But I think it's too. It's like well, when you're used to having a turkey every year or a big old ham, you know, like a spiral ham. Somebody had to kill that. Mm -hmm. See, but what shocks me the most is the fact that yeah, people buy like living animals, and they're like, I buy a cow every year, take it to slaughter, and that feeds my whole family for the year. It's like 800 pounds of food. And I'm just like, but you literally get to go to this place and say, I want that one. The one with the cute little spot on its nose. I want to cut its head off and eat it. Like, that's the sad stuff. <laughs> like, I would never be able to be a farmer. I would never be able to slaughter my own animals because the moment I get a goat, and I'm you know what you need it. to do? You need to open up a cheese farm. See, but, oh yeah, I like cheese. <laughs> it's as long as you do it properly, you're not harming, but then have not just a cow, you can have goat, you can have, I don't know if there's such thing as pig cheese, not head cheese. <laughs> like, I don't want that cheese. cheese. I don't know where it comes well, from. Well, <laughs> I do know that there are, there is a movement that's really is starting to pick up with breast milk, like human breast milk cheese. No. Yes. Ew. Yes. One Ew. day I'm going to make you speaking of it. Breaded breast milk cheese. I'd be like, here you go, Katie. It came from my titty if I'm ever pregnant. <laughs> so one of my cons that I had with this movie is like the opening. It felt so long. Like I, I get the whole he's cooking thing. And like, you know, you, you had that uh, intersected with like the different things that were happening in the in the daughter's lives. But it got to the point where I felt like there were just too many shots of food. And I wrote down, okay, I get it. The guy cooks. Like, it, <laughs> it was just too much. After a while, it's like, yeah, I, you know, like, I, I like the fact that we're seeing him make the meal. But it just felt like it was something that was overused. Yeah. And I was like, mm, I, I could have used less of the, of the food being made. And I did notice that the subtitles, um, they were off. Like um, when when he was having the conversation, when Martin was having the conversation with the other guy that that died, 
um, there was one where like the guy, he basically like he, he took God's name in vain and they put that in the subtitle that he said it and yet the actor didn't say it. And then in that same conversation, the actor, he's like, oh, thank God that, you know, we have our wives or whatever the case is. And then they left the thank God part out of the subtitling. Oh, I was like, like they didn't want to. They'll, they'll curse God, but they won't thank him in the <laughs> subtitles. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So every time they spoke Spanish, I was just kind of seeing like, how would they subtitle? And then, and what's interesting is if you don't know Spanish, yeah, it wouldn't. You wouldn't yeah, you would know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Now that makes me think because I watch a lot of like foreign horror movies. I'm like, do they really say that now? Yeah, you never know. <laughs> I guess I gotta Sometimes. learn Russian, French. And now I have to learn Spanish just to you see. You gotta get that uh, Rosetta Stone, not sponsored. Or the Duolingo. <laughs> um, I mean, I I will piggyback with the. I never realized how slow. Like, I don't think it for me didn't drag like as a bad thing. Like, oh God, get to the point. But it was definitely a slow burn, oh. um, for sure. And Fairies. I didn't realize how spoiled those daughters were. Like they were entitled. They had the world given to them. And it was just kind of like they were just spoiled. Mm -hmm. But that was about it. I mean, I didn't have a lot of cons. Yeah. I mean, I felt like sometimes it was just like so much happening. Like they try to jam pack so much into the story with like all these people's different lives and stuff like that. And then sometimes it just felt like with all of the story that they were trying to explain, they just left a lot of things out. Kind of yeah. like when we were talking about, oh, so how long has it passed since the beginning um, when when the first dinner happened to the end dinner? Like how much time did that that passed? Um, the scenes where like the the middle daughter she was meeting up with the boss that was yeah. like that just it just felt like it was just kind of shoved in there for filler where it was like let's just show as many different stories as we can. But yet we don't kind of go into them in great detail. It's just like surface level stuff. Um, I don't know. Sure. Well, do you have any more cons, Katie? Um, I guess my only con next would be the youngest daughter. Like when she moved in with the boyfriend and she was like, look, I cleaned it up. My first thought was, girl, this is not your house. Yes, you moved into him, in, in with him, but you literally brought, like, a bag full of clothes. This is still his shit, and you should have waited until he came back, and you guys could have claimed it together. Yeah. Because you're not his maid, for one. Two, he might be mad that you moved all his shit, and sure enough, he's like, where's my papers? Like, and then... I, I found it funny when she was like, okay, well, um, this pillow was over here. This was over here. Yeah, she's throwing things. She just throws down the bookcase. Yeah. I was like, who is this chick? Like, like she's was, crazy. Yeah, I'm like, ooh, they're going to break I mean, up. He wasn't wrong when he said, technically, you invited yourself. Like, yep. he, she did. He had no idea. Yeah. Which she, is got so rid of his hammock. she got rid of his She got rid of what? R rid of his hammock. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, why would you throw that away? Like, I'd be mad too. Are you looking at me? No, I'm just thinking about your invention. What invention? The hat hammock. Oh yeah, <laughs> I haven't talked about that. Wait, the hat hammock? Yeah, it's still it's still in um, what is it called? Production. Pre pre patent phase. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hat that turns into a hammock. But then I was thinking about it, and I was like, for the material to be able to fit into a hat. It would have to be like a Rastafarian hat that kind of unfur. But you know, it would work out. Unfurrow though. it and you make it into a hammock. But it and would you work out. But it would. And work it out. would work out for Jamaicans because it's a tropical mm -hmm. country, and you know I'm sure that there's a lot of nice places to have a hammock in there, yeah. and they, you know, you people who are Rastafarians already Rico. have big hats. You used to chill in a hammock in Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was the first time and I ever laid it. If you could fall out, you could flip out. No. Oh, damn. It has to be. Um, thick enough to hold people yeah. too. So you're going to have like a but giant I, hat. I don't know is like if Rastafarians are allowed to take their hats off. Like, because they have like the, the, the big hats. The and, it's, yeah, and it's like a religion. Yeah, it is a religion. Too. So that's what I'm saying. I like, know. I don't know if, if they're allowed to take, because if it does, then my idea falls apart. 
Well, if any Rastafarians are listening, or if anyone knows the Rasta religion, let us know. Will Almer is inventing? Like, <laughs> and I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> oh God, um, is there anything else we want to talk about, or we want to put a lid on the soup and call it a day? Yeah, I mean, I went through all my stuff. I have one more question, mm -hmm. and that is, if they decided to make a remake of this movie in today's time, would you? watch it and do you think it would be better i would watch it is it still a mexican family yeah, yeah. how much has changed even, you know what would be cool if they did remake it make a sequel instead of a remake of the family as they are today like the mm -hmm. daughters grew up they got married they had their own kids and it's all about like Coming the same that would be, yeah instead of a remake a sequel I mean, I would be down. I like I said, I enjoy these these videos, but I'm sure because she's probably thinking like, let's make they're probably going to be black. Uh, they're probably be little people. No, no, I literally thought. Watch, they do remake okay. it, and they like like they just recast all black people, but they change the name instead of tortilla soup. It's like fried chicken or something. Oh Jesus, Katie! I know <laughs> that's horrible, but <laughs> Katie has been canceled. Or I don't know what like fried I like greens. <laughs> I don't know, but I, mean, I get so I know, I, if it's a sequel, I want to keep it Mexican. That's what I want. Or if it's a remake, I want to keep it Mexican. But I think it would be interesting to see instead of it being like Paul Rodriguez comes home and it's like work. It, no no much. what i'm saying is it's like you know paula rodriguez comes home like the 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 teacher daughter is a lesbian and he had no idea like that would be interesting um but i don't know anyway <laughs> the grandma not. comes back into the mix and she's like i will get my man <laughs> me <and> more <laughs> rubbing it out <laughs> Been for 84 years for this night. <laughs> oh god, it's like sandpaper. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have anything else to add? <laughs> um fried chitlins. You know that would be funny, and you know damn well they would do that. And Jordan Peely would be <laughs> Directing it or Tyler Perry, you know, that's the truth. I like how you call him, call him Peely, isn't it? Peely, no, it's Peel. Are you sure? Because I keep, I keep hearing it's Peely, yeah, no, it's, isn't it? Key and Peel, there I was a they had a show called Key and Peel. Oh, <laughs> Peely, it's like Pele. <laughs> take <laughs> Pele without the fro. I say, take us out, girl. Well, that's all we got for you today. Too. She choked well, on her fried greens. No, because like on her chitlins. <laughs> fried chitlins. I can totally see it. Tyler Perry, Medea's fried chitlins. <laughs> you know damn well they would do that. Hollywood would too. <laughs> would do it, you know. Move over fried green tomatoes. <laughs> If I could find that for all of us to watch, I'm definitely going to pick it one day. Fried did you? No, fried oh. green tomatoes. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. What did you think about Tortilla Soup? Do you want us to review a movie? Comment below and let us know. In the meantime, smash that subscribe button and ring that little bell so you get notified of all the new content. And we will see you next week. Bye. Rub that seed. Uh, Mia more. <laughs>